Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions in the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really, depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Leotis, and on social media, you know me as PD Beats. You will recognize my guest from a show that just dropped on Amazon Prime called Upload. We're with Kevin Bigley. Kevin, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm going to drink from this giant iced coffee, if that's okay. Of course. love iced coffee. Um, I feel like last summer, that's all I drank. It felt like we just kind of made co- brew coffee in the morning, put it in the fridge, and then boom, it was ready to go. Yeah, my hydration levels have not been very high during this quarantine. <laughs> it's a lot of coffee, <laughs> for sure. Oh, no, for sure. Um, congratulations on the success of Upload. It hasn't even been two weeks, but the reception has been incredible. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a it's been kind of a surreal thing. It's really hard to uh, gauge, I think, how things do now in in in, in a streaming environment. But um, the outpouring of like affection from all of these other countries, places I've never been before, uh, like Brazil, and I get little things from Indonesia and Argentina and South Korea. Like it's just it's surreal. So. It's really cool, yeah, and it hasn't even been two weeks. It hasn't even been two weeks, and it it is crazy, specifically about you, specifically about Kevin Bigley. I mean, when did you kind of decide that, like, acting and storytelling was something that you wanted to do? Oh, man, I think uh, probably around age 14, 15, I started doing some, some, uh, like, school plays and stuff, and... I, it kind of, I think you kind of gravitate towards what makes you feel special and exceptional, of course. And, and that was, uh, it was, it was being in those plays and stuff. So then I went to DePaul, uh, the theater school out in Chicago and yeah, spent a lot of time doing those things. So a lot of people have watched upload already, but we want more people to watch upload. <laughs> so for the people who have not watched upload can you talk a little bit about what can they, they can expect and talk a little bit about your character kevin yeah um it's kind of a trippy sci-fi comedy with some romance and mystery it's kind of like a a weird turducken that a ba- uh, basket robins almost right all the flavors <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All these working components and flavors that uh, maybe shouldn't mix, but they do. Um, yeah, it's about uh, a future that's very, uh, very close that we're, we feel like we're very close to 2033, in which you can upload your consciousness to an afterlife, but it's kind of been um, corporatized. So, um, and uh, you go to this v- very beautiful lodge called Lakeview, uh, and I'm a character who's been there for a while. And this guy, played by Robbie Amell, Nathan, he gets uploaded, and I'm eager to become his best friend. Absolutely. Um, can we just talk about the cast and crew? I mean, from top to bottom, like an amazing cast and crew. Yeah, yeah. Cast is amazing. Um, it's weird because sometimes... Oh, can I can I cuss on this? I can cuss, right, Pete? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, th- there's there's usually uh, a douchebag or two on a set. You, you it's just. It's, I thought that know, was I, gonna be worse. You could say that. That's yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. yeah. yeah douchebags. Uh, <laughs> douchebags, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never know with with these. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's usually there's usually an asshole or two on set. Um, it just is it's the law of averages. But man, everyone was really really cool. Um, Robbie's amazing, such a nice guy, such a sweetheart. And then uh, and Andy and Allegra and Zane Ever are just so fun and so cool. And so it's a great time. And yeah. also a shout out to um, one of my favorite, you know, actors because I've been following him for a while, and he's been he's an upload, and he's been on my show is uh, Chris Williams. I'm a huge fan of Chris Williams. Chris is awesome because yeah, he, he, I did, yeah. like he had a role in Silicon Valley as Hoover, one of the security guards, and it is some of the funniest <laughs> stuff I've ever seen in a sitcom or like television show. Like he is so funny. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 hilarious. He's awesome on Silicon Valley, and he's just he's just a funny dude in general. But it's a bit his character is a little different in Upload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit darker. Yeah, it's a little darker. He's he's handling the heavy theme stuff and and awesome because it's you know he can he can carry that load. That's what's crazy about the show is that 
it's constantly turning these corners as we navigate the storylines and you can do something as dumb and silly as some of the stuff I do. And then you turn a corner because this guy's dying of vape lung, you know, no, it's a sure. tripping thing. Absolutely. People are obviously like people are talking about Netflix a lot, but like specifically Amazon Prime right now, I'm just loving the content being put out by them, you know, like upload, hunters. Um, they mm. had, you know, the boys, which was like one of my favorite shows of, of, of the year, like a, like superheroes, so, man. Superheroes yeah. literally on drugs. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah. nuts, you know what I mean? Um, it's it's an amazing opportunity for storytellers like yourself because all these streaming platforms allow for more opportunities for all of you, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say that um, they're very they're very meticulous in what they want to put out there and how much stuff they put out there. Netflix is fun because it feels like things pop up out of nowhere and you're like, whoa, there's a show out all of a sudden that I I have to watch. Mm-hmm. With Amazon they're just very very careful about what they what they put out there they don't put out as much and the stuff that they put out i don't know they're very they're they're they're, their notes are very specific and they're also very hands-off when it comes to us making it yeah i i heard of that before i heard it's kind of like uh not all the time but sometimes it's like here's the keys go for it you know what i mean yeah you know i think i think greg was in talks with them around 2015 26 when it came to like getting it made and uh, so it was definitely a long haul we got we we started doing we did our first table read in 2017 December of 2017 and then we did the pilot in January of 2018 we got picked up in the summer of 2018 it's been a long it's been a long road but kind of what's nice about that I think is that it's it it allows um them to kind of put you through this little these little trials and tribulations of mm-hmm. of being patient making sure that we come out the right way and then they just go for it as far as publicity they've done everything they've done has been really cool and, and they've been shoving it down people's throats so i mean an actor's dream is to work on a show and then they're kind of playing the waiting game to see if they can make more of that show yeah, and you yeah. guys didn't have to play the waiting game that long because it already got picked up for season two. So congratulations on that. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Um, the fact, again, like they're just a really cool network and um, in company because they just let us know immediately. And usually you're going to be twisting in the wind for a little while, but you know they they were so proud of the show and they have been so proud of the show. And it feels like they kind of picked up marketing. They're like pushing yeah. it. I'm getting so many texts from people from friends being like, I am so tired of seeing your face. But I don't know. I, I don't know if you, I mean, IMDB pro is something I've kind of like been really on lately. And, you know, they have like the movie meter of, you know, the rankings and, you know, it's number four right now, which is crazy. I know it tripped me out. I saw that too. A friend sent me something because Andy was three. <laughs> yeah. And you're, Andy, you're in like, like you're, you're in the top 500. Oh, I, yeah. I jumped way up and all that. It's super fun. I think it's mostly based off of if people are Googling you. It's yeah. Not, but the thing is, but it's, the so, thing. it's fun. Yeah. But it is, I feel like it goes with the whole, like, you know, like on, on, on social media, like the blue check mark, like getting verified. Yeah. I yeah, feel like yeah. people are like, Oh, whatever. It matters, man. It does. Yeah. And I feel it's like fun. the IMDb it's, Pro rankings do matter in a sense because it it's has, certainly has to be- there's something to them. Yeah, I, there's it's an indication of some sort of that people are at least are checking it out. What I really love watching is these think pieces, you know, that are coming out like Vox doing an article on the technology and Vulture doing an article with futurists and technologists and stuff. That stuff is like that's indicative of you being in the zeitgeist, which is so hard to do. But oh, yeah. it's been really cool to watch that impact. So, yeah. But it, it's really impactful. I talked to Zainab Johnson about it a little bit because um, obviously I was able to talk to her about Upload because it was out. But when I did the interview of Chris Williams, Upload was not out yet, so we couldn't talk mm-hmm. about it. However, he was he sounded pretty excited about the project. When you were kind of working on it, did you have a feeling that, you ha- that there was something special kind of brewing with Upload, Kevin? I feel like I did. Um, I've been on a lot of things where um, you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like if you're in a relationship, this is a really bad analogy, but and like being, being in a relationship is very similar to being on a show and there's relationships where they feel good when you're in them. And then when you get out of them, you guys break up, you go, Oh my God, there were problems throughout. And there's some thing, you know, like, uh, some 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 red flags that really become apparent later on 
Um, and I've been on shows where you're like, the show's good, but there's a couple red flags that might hold us back. And then you get out of it and you go, oh yeah, we didn't really stand a shot. But this, during the honeymoon phase, I was like, I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the problems. The you know, problems. I, I, yeah. I, it, it seems like the cast is really great. Everyone's really professional. Everyone's coming with their stuff correct as far as like getting their lines down. Everybody's working really hard. Greg is awesome. The network is great. It's like I, I really, it's, I really don't know how else this is supposed to feel. So it was really cool. Was, you, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that I feel like are driving people to watch a lot of content on you know streaming services and TV shows right now. But I think the big thing, Kevin, you see with upload is, and I think it's really important. And I wouldn't be surprised if you asked a lot of people this because people like the stories and the characters the way these shows are looking like the cinematography and is like out of this world. You know what I mean? And I think that kind of drives me to watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did a really good job as far as making it look a little bit different. And obviously Greg comes from mockumentary and being able to do something that was something so different from what he usually does. But yeah, there's some cinematic stuff that, can we, that. can we just say right now that Greg Daniels is like a genius? Can we just say that? <laughs> yeah. Can we I, just say I, it right now? It's really hard to work with him because you um, <laughs> love him so much. And, and, and <laughs> I had to get over myself in regards to I was I've, I've just been trying to, without overtly saying it out loud, trying to find ways to let him know how important comedically he's been to me <laughs> but and i yeah. had to stop doing it so but what i find really really interesting is for example you know um you're seeing it a lot with parks and rec now but you know the office is on netflix and people are still watching it like all the time he yeah. has upload that just dropped he has space for the, the space force that comes space on force, netflix yeah. in the end of may um yeah. and then you forget about like king of the hill you know what i mean which is like one of my favorite mm -hmm. shows like it's nuts yeah. man yeah, all the all the Simpsons episodes. Yeah, um, Simpsons. Specifically, Homer Badman, terrific, and he had some of the best years on SNL. I mean, yeah, it'd be like he, he's he. I always joke that it's like he he comprises over you know almost entirely what I find funny. Like I wonder how he's. I wonder how he's juggling now the marketing and the production aspect of like upload just came out. It got announced for season two, and he has Space Force, which seems like it's going to be a hit because that cast looks unbelievable. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. Like he must be a pretty busy guy right now. Like, yeah, I think he said that the busiest year he ever had was launching Parks and Rec or season two of Parks and Rec, and then he was co-show running that as well as season six of The Office, and he had about fifty episodes of television that he had to write. So that's that was like the his busiest year, and then this one he was like. It, we're both high concept shows, upload and, and Space Force. So he certainly has a full plate, but at least it's like ten episodes and ten episodes. I mean, I I spoke to like Michael Price, who's the he he was a you know writer producer on The Simpsons for many years, but he's a showrunner of FS for Family on Netflix, and he says like that happens a lot more than you think. There is kind of overlap. Like they have a lot of shows going on, and you're working on a lot of shows. David Silverman, who's like the director of the Simpsons movie, he's been on my show a few times. He's like always working on The Simpsons. Like I don't think he's ever yeah. not going to be working on it. No, I think it's just the Simpsons are just always going. It's just like a, it's just an engine. It's just always running. Yeah. What was the uh, so what was the coolest thing about working on Upload, and what was the hardest thing besides working with Greg Daniels about working on on, on Upload? Because I know you're going to say that, but I want to know because every time an actor kind of goes on a project, there's going to be some really cool, amazing moments, but there's also going to be some some challenges and some learning experiences. I really loved this. I mean, I know this sounds, this is not an exciting answer, but the schedule was really nice. I mean, I would shoot probably three to four days out of the week and probably for about eight hours a day. And I would have one 12 hour day, which is really nice. Like you're, you have a little bit of time and, and, and to relax and get some sleep. And, and so everyone was really healthy and, and, and that's really essential for a show. And we were up in Vancouver, and, and, and that really helped. I'd say another one of the coolest things that was also the hardest was I've never had so many curveballs thrown at me um, in regards to uh, obstacles to shoot. Like I had to do – I've never acted with that much green screen. Uh, there was one week where it was like 
I was in a hot tub. I acted with a dog. Um, <laughs> we had to do green screen. I had to have a bunch of scenes with the kid. It's these are all kind of like faux pas for like yeah. what you would shoot. You know, they're like don't don't write in kids, don't write with animal in animals and stuff. So it was a really trying week because it was like my god, they're throwing the kitchen sink at me. But like it was so fun and it felt. There were so many big shots that we had to do when Robbie and I are running around on the the gray market looking for Dylan. It was so much fun. And they have this giant crane shot. And you're like, oh, I'm like on a superhero movie right now. <laughs> like this is, this is the biggest set I've ever been on. So it was just kind of, um, it, you want to rise to the occasion. So, it, But it, it was really challenging. No, amazing. Um, There's a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of interviews and a lot of of press right now that you're kind of partaking in with with Upload because it's very fresh. Um, One thing that a lot of people are doing are like Instagram lives, you know what I mean? Um, Which is something that I do a lot on Popternative. It would be cool to do one with you one day because those are so much fun and interactive, you know what I mean? Um, What's the the reception on your end specifically, not just Upload, but like Kevin Bigley's end been with the fans so far, Kevin? Really cool. I mean, again, I'm not used to so many people. Like it, it, Greg even said this. He was like, "I've never uh, achieved the global success of a show overnight like that." Like it, it that that's what's kind of startling about it. But there's been a lot of people have been hitting me up on Instagram and and Twitter and everything. I I wrote a book, um, a novel that came out this year. Mm-hmm. Comaville, and then yep. all of a sudden people are buying the book and like sending me messages about it it's just the sweetest thing the fans are like really nice <laughs> so what's the what's, what's the book uh what's the book about book is about this um this guy he's like 36 and he wakes up in his childhood bedroom and he has no idea how he got there um and he kind of is in this childhood home and he walks out and he finds himself in this city filled with uh nostalgic people like his like favorite camp counselor and kids that he used to go to school with and like favorite teachers and stuff and pop culture icons. And, and it's just like this weird, and they all love seeing him. And uh, you figure out, this is not a spoiler. This is chapter two that he's in a coma. So the entire book is about this guy who's trapped in his mind, uh, in his memories. Kevin's got to leave the interview right now to work on the uh, television adaptation of this, uh, of this <laughs> book. <laughs> Yeah, Man, right. like that that's gonna be a show like come on it's how can that not yeah. be a show <laughs> yeah we might we might try and do a, a, a film adaptation it would be pretty cool is that but, the goal yeah. do you find when people write stuff like a book or a graphic novel that like they want to make it and adapt it into like tv or film or is it just kind of gravy on the mashed potatoes when they're able to do it but is that it's the goal one. when they write something you know what i mean that's a good way to put it. It's definitely gravy on the mashed potatoes. I think. <laughs> I know, it's a very. I say that sometimes. I'm that's just a good. We're throwing out analogies. <laughs> We're just throwing them out. I, I, I for me, uh, yeah, like it was. <laughs> it was more about the experience of writing it, and I, and the fact that I got it published was like a huge win for me. And people reading it and stuff has been really awesome. So it's nice to have that it like done. You know, like it's out there and people can find it and buy it and all that stuff. But like the adaptation thing is promising and that's pretty cool and uh, yeah. something I would really like to do, but it was, it never really crossed my mind too much until like recently. I can work you get like on app, like work you get the book. Cause I got, yeah, you can get it on, you can get it all over the place wherever you buy books, Amazon, you can get it on Amazon and yeah. you can get it on clash okay. books is the, the um, publisher. You can buy it there. If you buy it on class books, they like hand wrap it and they give you some bookmarks and stuff. It's pretty cool. Nice. I got to get on that. That's awesome. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show. And again, man, upload. It's on uh, It's on Amazon Prime, right? People could check it out right now. Yeah, man. They can watch it. All 10 dropped. And then uh, we got renewed for season two. Super cool. I don't know. You know, everything's kind of up in the air as far as when anybody's shooting. So hopefully we'll do it pretty soon and we'll get them out next year or something absolutely and where can people follow you on social media to keep up with follow me uh instagram's kevin w bigley and then uh uh twitter someone had the name so i had to throw in the middle initial and then kevin bigley on twitter so all i that. guess that's how the cookie crumbles man <laughs> <laughs> sorry 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 uh, all these like 
Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, this has been uh, Popternative, um, youtube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes. Um, you need to watch Upload Now on Amazon Prime. It features Kevin Bigley and an amazing cast and crew. And it's a really cool, fun um, sci-fi. There's like, like you, you, you actually like hit it so well. You said all the elements together, like that. I am, I am so happy that I do not have to explain the show to people anymore <laughs> because, like, having to explain, it's like you're dead, uh, but you're not. Like, you're uploaded, and it's a technological universe. And then people were like, "It's a comedy," and you're like, "Yeah," and other things. So it's like I'm so relieved that I don't have to keep trying to like. My wife, I, I had to be like, it, it's funny, I swear, it's good. And she was like, I don't really understand what you're talking about. So just check it out, and I think you'll like it. It's a good quarantine yeah. watch, especially. For sure. YouTube.com slash for previous episodes as well. Until next time, this is Petey Beats and Kevin Bigley signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.